Hi, this is James from Tabletop Gaming Guild, and today we're going to look at Battlecrest. This is the Fellwood base game. This is going to be what you're going to need to um, play Battlecrest, and there's different expansions that you can get along the way. But in this game, it's a two-player game published by Button Shy Games, which does these little wallet-sized games, typically about 18 cards per game. And you get a lot of game in these tiny little packages. This game itself is going to be a two-player skirmish style game. You're going to each play as a warrior and try to defeat the other over a battlefield. And you get to use your different weapons and fire off different bonuses and really cool stuff. So let's go ahead down to the table. I'll give you a general idea how the game plays and then we'll come back and I'll give you my final thoughts. <music> All right, so this is Game of Battlecrest. In the Game of Battlecrest, you're going to set out your region locations, which are going to be these guys, in this pattern. You'll have them going across like this, and you'll have these ones here. Now, they're all going to be marked um, by start. So this is going to be, sorry, if it's okay, that's going to say start. That's going to be the start side of each of the locations. Then each player is going to get a character. In the base game, there's going to be two. This is going to be a head-to-head -head skirmish style game. And each of these characters has unique decks here. And these powers are two-sided. You're going to set the heart to the, to the left of them. And this is going to be your, basically, health gauge. What's going to happen is as you take damage, if you look at this little chart here, you're going to move this heart down to equal what you got. So he starts with 12. Health, if you get one damage, you would put it here. If you took two damage, it would go here, and so on. Once it gets here and then goes off, it'll flip. You'll get a uh, permanent symbol on here, but a little enough, uh, uh, some more on that in the future. Uh, but that's how you track health. And these are the different abilities that the uh, hero has. Now, uh, we're going to go over those in a second, but you're going to also place your hero out diagonally to the start card here on either side. So this player will put theirs there. Uh, this player has a minion, so they'll put their hero here and then the minion here. And the player uh, who is by the region with the lowest number will go first. All right, so the actions you can take on your turn, you can take up to two of these, is going to be move. You can move one or more of your warriors, uh, one at a time, up to the movement value. A hero's movement value is the sum of the movement values of all their active cards, action cards. A menu movement is listed on the card. So I'll explain where you're going to get the movement here in a second, but if you look at your menu here, um, this one here is going to have its movement listed on it. So, these are all active. If they're turned to the side, they're not active. So, if this one was turned to the side here, then I would only have two, four, five movement. And I can only move orthogonally. So, I could move up here, um, I can move here, here, and here. At the end of my turn, I have to be adjacent to one of these. Now, some of these locations, like this one here, has these little arrows. I can jump here, here, or here um, through that location. So that's I end up here. If I'm next to any of these bonuses, I will get these bonuses, um, and then the uh, location will flip. So this would flip. Now this bonus is available. This bonus is available over here. We'll go over those in a second. The other thing I could do is activate one of my cards. So if I activate one of the cards, I get to do this. Uh, this one here, I get to march three, uh, which is a free movement, and attack one for a uh, range of five. So if I do that, um, I could just go up here, and then I can attack my opponent and do some damage and we'll go over attacking in a second. The next thing I can do is prime a card. I can just turn it to a side. When you're priming these cards you actually get the uh, the symbol here on the upper left hand corner and I'll go over what that is here in a second. And the final thing you could do is refocus and refocus will uh, flip each of your cards over so they'll go over to the other side and they'll become upright.
again. So they're all active now. So you're basically refreshing your stack of actions and you get to use the opposite side, which is different from the side that you're on. All right, so let's go over attacks a little bit. Attacks you're gonna have uh, basically uh, several different things they can do. One that you saw that was going to be is going to be ranged. So this one here is ranged and this will tell you how far the range is going to be. So this is going to be range three. Attack two is going to be how much damage you're going to do to the opponent. Um, you also have medium range. Let's see if I have a pic one with a medium range on here. Medium range has a little picture of an axe on it. Actually, I'll just show you right here in the rule book. Uh, medium range has this little picture right here, uh, and you can uh, target anything adjacent, which it does include identical or a, a diagonal. Sorry. Um, you also have short range. The target must be um, basically orthog orthogonally adjacent to you, and then you have super long range, which is one of the ones that one had, uh, and you have to be within the area outside of immediately adjacent. And that's basically how you're gonna do targeting. All right, so how do you deal damage? Well, uh, for minions, it's gonna be really easy. Uh, minions have their defense uh, right here. So this is a two defense, so you have to exceed that to do damage. If you do any damage to a minion, they'll flip over. If you deal damage again, the minion dies. Heroes can do multiple different things. They can uh, exhaust an active card here for their um, defense value. So this one here will give me one defense plus every single one of these type of sigils that's available. So if this card was turned like this, the sigil's available. So this would mean that I could exhaust this card and I would get plus two defense. Also, being next to some of these locations can also give you defense. Oh, here's one of the ones with an axe ability. This is an attack two axe, and it has a um, target of two, so or damage of two. So you could use this one to do your attack if you're adjacent to this location. All right, so that is going to be how your defense works. Some of the locations can give you defense also, which is really nice. And let's so let's go over some of the stuff that's about on a location now. Each of these locations can have multiple different bonuses. Uh, the ones like this one here, uh, this one, like I said, it'll help you move. So this one, if you're facing this, you can move to any of these other three locations immediately, which is nice, so it's sort of like a little teleporting thing. And you can notice that a lot of these have different symbols on here. So if you're adjacent to this one, uh, you gain uh, movement. So your move action and movement abilities that start from this location gain plus one movement. The value uh, does not apply to focus, but uh, when you do use this, it's gonna flip over, so it'll be on this side. And then you got a different uh, icon that could, if you're adjacent to, that would occur, and these hands are for fighting. Um, so basically this one is attack abilities gain plus one value. There's two of these, so it's gonna gain plus two value, so that's pretty nice. Some other symbols, let's see, you have this shield here. Uh, this shield, if you're adjacent to that, your defense against an attack gains plus one. So I remember how I said that you can gain some more defense by being adjacent to it, that's how. Uh, you have some long range abilities, I showed you one of those before and you need stars for those. And the way that you're gonna get stars is these cars will give you stars. So when you activate this ability, I'll have a star, then I can use this here, and this is a force four. Um, this makes me um, be able to move an opponent um, up to four spaces, and then I can battle them if they're adjacent. Uh, another symbol here, we're gonna look, that was the movement symbol I went over, and we went over the force symbol and the long range symbol we went over earlier. Um, so those are different bonuses that you can get from being in the locations. You're gonna continue this game until you knock out your opponent. And your opponent will be knocked out when they get to zero health. A couple things to keep in mind is once this thing flips over and you're halfway to being dead, uh, you will get this power up by having the sigil available all the time. So really good. And once you get down to the bottom here, you have your little skull 
and that player is defeated. So that's basically how you're going to be playing Battle Crest. Okay, so I just want to go over to the heroes that come with this game here, the base game. This one here is Akina. Akina has her main ability, which is you may swap Akina with a warrior in uh, melee range. When you make an attack, you get two plus each of these sigils that are available and uh, do a melee attack. Uh, Akina here is a cosmic energy personified. A font of ancient knowledge provides her with a flexibility that mere mortals lack. In battle, she draws guidance from the powerful ancestor spirits, giving her both durability and strength in equal measure. To defeat her is defeat uh, mortality itself. For what could be more deadly than a living goddess? And these are the different things she has. She has the ancestral void, fallen uh, gods, and Ar arcane warrior. Um, she does have uh, four different uh, active abilities that she can have. Uh, this one here, a Void Caster. Uh, of course, there's eight, really, because they flip over. But this one here is Void Caster. It says March 3, attack 1 with a range of 5, and it has a symbol available to it. The, uh, and one defense. Uh, this side here, uh, you're going to give you up to two movement, but it has a force plus two, uh, and plus each one of these... Um, um, Icons that are available and four range, and this one gives you a star, also two defense. This one here gives going to have you one movement. It's going to be attack three for um, and attack two for melee. Uh, it has this symbol available, and uh, this could give you defense if you have the, any of these symbols. This side here uh, plus uh, gives you two movement and attack one plus any of these symbols and. Uh, Melee attack and gives you a star. This one can give you plus one defense and additional defense for each one of those symbols. Uh, so that's that card. This one here just gives you two stars straight up and two movements and two defense. Uh, this one here uh, gives you one movement for attack and plus one defense and plus for each of those symbols. Also, you get an additional defense. This one here is attack plus two, two plus any of these symbols, and it's a range of three and um, targeting two damage and this one has two defense flip this over you have one uh, movement attack two and range three and this one has a defense one so that is a keen you have your other character here that comes with the base game here and this one also has a minion that comes with this this is mutiny uh, mutiny's base uh, ability is going to be attack uh, which is a range of two, and then you can uh, increase the range with this symbol right here, where X is targeting distance from mutiny. Okay, and this side here, uh, mutiny, uh, the rugged raider has seen better days, but that won't stop him. He's got a head full of schemes and an array of ill-gotten loot to keep him going. Why, wily and cr uh, clever, mutiny knows better than to pick a fair fight. The best battles are the ones that end in a single shot from afar, with his clockwork rig helping him to pin the target down. Less fuss that way. So this one has Rogue Edge, Storm Eye, and Treasure Hunter. Those are the symbols it has available. Here's Rig. Rig has two sides, of course, because this is going to be the healthy side and this is going to be the broken side. And then once it's hit again, it's gone from the game. Uh, rig here, uh, all enemies in melee range of Rig may not defend, which is really cool. And here, uh, if uh, Rig is in melee range of Mutiny, uh, flip Rig back over so Rig can heal himself. So that's really cool. There's your heart thing. Now, Mutiny only has three cards because they had... Uh, Mutiny has a minion. So this one here is going to be three movement, one star, and attack one plus each of these symbols and a range of three. Two defense. This one here has three movement and two stars, one defense and additional defense for each of these symbols. This one here has two attack and four range, two movement and one defense plus each of those symbols. This one here has two movement. March three, which is nice. Uh, attack uh, two plus uh, any one of these symbols, range three. And this one has one defense and it'll go up for each of those symbols. The final one here has uh, two movement. Uh, it will get attack three, force 
uh, three plus each of these symbols and melee and one defense. This one here is force two with a range of four for its attack, a star and one movement and one defense plus one for each of those symbols. That is going to be mutiny. I just wanted to show you the two characters that you get with the base game. So let's go ahead back up to the table here and I'll give you my final thoughts. So I really like this tiny game. You get a lot of game out of the, I don't even know how they do this, like how they design like this game out of 18 cards. That is amazing. Uh, normally you think like micro games and a micro game is just a game with like a little bit of rules and you know, whatever. It's a filler game. This is actually a full size game in this tiny amount of cards. It is great skirmish style game. And there's a lot of different strategy that you can employ in this game to defeat your opponent. So you have multiple different strategies in this tiny little game. And it plays really quickly. So you can play a couple games and do best two out of three and then switch uh, heroes and try again. Uh, there are some more expansions with it, but there's a lot of replayability in just this little tiny, really tiny game. You can take it to uh, friends and take it with you uh, everywhere you go, so you can play it with friends and family, you can play it at a restaurant, a bar, or whatever. Really easy, really portable, and really fun. So, really, I have never played Button Shy games before, honestly, and I really love this one. I will be taking it to any event that I go, because, like, it's really small and easy to take. Um, and, uh, you know, it's fun. So that's my thoughts on... Uh, Battlecrest by Button Shy Games. Thank you for watching.